Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number 11 of our official series, where we want some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. And as always, the server and Discord links are in the description. I'll also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video. So feel free to jump around if there's any that catch your eye. But today, starting out on Friday, we are on Sunrise Circuit. Now, I wasn't completely sure. I feel like maybe we've had one uh, episode or uh, recap series with this track, but I did want to give a couple, or rather two leads specifically, just so you guys can kind of see the track. So let's talk about the lines that I'm looking for here. Basically trying to run this whole entire outside. The gravel, if you hit it, is pretty crazy. You can see a little bit of hesitation in my wheel, taking that all the way in the outside there to the outside here, going a little bit too far with a little bit of a wheel drop. And then just trying to run this outside. This transition I was struggling with, it, uh, with. I still think I'm struggling just a little bit. Uh, then keeping that wheel speed up, going on the outside here. And uh, really like the track does uh, speak for itself here, honestly. It's a kind of self-explanatory track. Going for the inside here, we switch over to a pretty crazy train. And also just, just to say like this weekend, I just want to say thank you so much for everyone that's been joining from YouTube, uh, you know, Twitch, like it's just been insane. It's been such a pleasure to have everyone on the server, seeing all these different drivers uh, driving together. I hope to see a lot more of you more often, but here we're just trying to take a nice P3 or sorry, a P4 position, not doing anything too crazy, kind of giving a pretty big gap of proximity. I think a lot of people were still trying to figure out and just fill out this track. This was pretty far in. And also you might notice we do have a couple new cars. If you haven't already, we did a rotation of the swarm cars for our server. We like to run eight different unique ones each month. And this week, I think, uh, apparently I say it wrong, but the Stega or the Stega or the Stegi was uh, one of those that came through as well as the A70 Supra, I believe. But here again, not going too crazy. Just trying to give a little bit of that proximity gap. We've talked about it before. Just a little bit of a cushion, a little bit of a uh, kind of proximity gap, just in case there's any mishaps or a little bit in back and forth. So anyone behind me, has a really smooth follow, even if there's some uh, turbulence in front. It's not even too crazy on this track. I just wanted to mention it. But this was a pretty fun track. It looks really nice, by the way. Really nice visually. And again, just running that outside, just trying to stay with them. I was struggling on this part right here, but trying to stick with them. But now we switch actually to another track. Now, this is kind of crazy, guys. I mean, I don't know what everyone was uh thinking <laughs> i'm gonna be honest bro uh this is gunside togue now as far as the togue track i mean it's pretty legit i only put one run in here i did not have a singular good run here we have our guide p3z known as pez known as p3 just kind of uh showing us where we can drift what that might look like he was actually killing it on this track i'm gonna be honest uh e even at night he was absolutely ripping it but yeah here i'm just trying not to fall off there you can see a big fall off area uh all i can really say on this track dude is uh yeah man i, I i'm sure that, like if you guys have any clips or any videos of you guys drifting i'd love to see it but uh i mean you got to be a madman and uh pretty experienced to drift this track you can see me just completely struggling it just felt so awkward, but for like an actual grip toke track, I think it would be really, really fun. So if you're into like those togue, actual togue uh, maps, you, you'll probably love this. I think if I had a gripped up car, <laughs> dude, watching this back is so bad. If you had a gripped up car though, uh, this could be really fun, man. I know uh, some of the boys were like, yeah, I'm not going to drift this, but they were uh, apparently ripping it in the swarm cars, just going sicko mode, as some would say. But while we're kind of just watching this uh, tomfoolery, one thing I just wanted to shout out is my last video. I got a comment regarding my force feedback and that it was clipping too much. Personally, I've been a little bit hesitant, man, to uh, to change the force feedback. I didn't want to lose really any of that feeling. I was like, oh, you know, if it's clipping, it's whatever. It's really not that big of a deal. It seems like when I watch these back, it's only clipping on like these really big bumpy areas. 
However, I reduced my gain, I believe, in game by 20%. And I want to say that's from 80% to 60 and uh, increased my pit house or the Moza control panel, basically, to or from 70 to 80. And uh, if you haven't really tried yet, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it seems like the less you can get the basically the clipping down, you'll see there at the bottom right hand, that little gray bar that you'll see going red here and there. That is going to be what's uh, showing you what's clipping. And uh, yeah, man, like I, I don't really know how to describe it. I actually sat in my IRL car, not a drift car, just uh, my IRL car and just kind of was really thinking about how it feels versus uh, a set of Corsa in my rig. And yeah, it's like so, so less responsive, but that's probably kind of how a, a real car is, right? So not quite that much, but it did... Uh, this change actually felt really good so if you haven't already i would really recommend like maybe recording some replays lowering your force feedback and uh increasing into your control panel instead but enough of that we're now on clutch kickers and actually i should mention really quick uh that force feedback change you're gonna see it i believe after us air so it's after clutch kickers and then uh together actually gonna be looking at it seeing if it's gonna clip more or not but i felt like i was able to be a little bit better on transitions i didn't have some of the oscillation issues some most of people or even really uh force feedback direct drive wheels uh people might have so again like i guess i just wanted to kind of make this video and that add in that commentary just because uh the last series or the last video rather on the first person view seems like after talking to a lot of people this last weekend genuinely helped so anything that I learn or that I'm kind of figuring out as I go, I wanted to make sure I'm sharing that information with you guys. And again, thank you guys for being here and watching. But now we're on a, another chase with the big old fridge. You can see uh, still trying to learn the rear end of that thing. I mean, it is like if you look at it, it takes up like the whole screen. It's insane. A lot of people were driving it, though. It seemed like a lot of people enjoyed it on Saturday. You'll see actually in this video went through a couple of the cars and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that when we get there but yeah just a pretty uh chill chill chase not doing anything too crazy honestly i was just taking this opportunity to kind of learn where the boundaries were between uh the big fridge in front of me and uh where my car ends but you can see i mean so many people were just straight up killing it as always a little late on that transition but not too bad train looking pretty healthy i'm looking at the track cam now i mean pretty crazy man watching it back dude the track camera is so crazy to watch but now as i mentioned we are now on u.s airway air raceway excuse me and yeah i feel like i've gotten a little bit better with this uh i did notice and you can see right now uh we haven't switched the force feedback i'm pretty sure this was a little bit earlier in that session and you can just see the straight up red uh absolutely pegged on red throughout some of these sections again i don't know if i could really describe it and do it justice but it definitely makes it a lot easier to work with the car and i don't feel like i'm fighting it all the time it's still heavy i still like it to be a little bit heavier i'll probably still continue to tweak it here and there but i feel like this got me to such a better position especially like this section right here we have this big entry into this big like sweeper uphill downhill craziness once i got the force feedback dialed in it felt a lot more manageable where before i felt like i was kind of hoping that my lines and hoping that my car would just go where i was hoping it would i, I know i'm saying hoping a lot but like that's really the best way i could describe it and also i put in a couple uh within this video i put in a couple more uh runs from tracks that are not uh, that are shorter that have a little bit shorter lap so we can really appreciate it but yeah let's see here yeah still a little bit of clipping i'm not sure if that's actually after the change and and i actually haven't really watched this when i was editing it i didn't i didn't watch my force feedback or the clipping so we're kind of learning this together if i see a lot throughout this video i'll probably make a couple more tweaks and then uh, report back to you guys but yeah, now we're on a chase with Scooby. Really, really good driver to follow. 
super consistent. I feel like actually I have very similar lines to him. Looking for his entry point. He's already kind of in drift here. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not slowing down too much. But you can see I'm causing a little bit of uh, turbulence with the chase behind me. This area right here, by the way, it does feel like you have to find a good line between going uh, too shallow or too far out. If you go too far out, you kind of lose a lot of that uh, uh, momentum. But if you go too far in, it's almost impossible to follow. And there you can see me making a little bit of a mistake, hurting the people behind me. But now we switch over to CG Drift Valley. And this is specifically the V2 for anyone curious. I really enjoyed this track this weekend. I've enjoyed it before, but I mean, you can see on the track cam, we had some absolutely crazy trains going on. I was just trying to fill it out. It's been a, a little bit for me. And I remember last time I, I thought a lot of these corners were really awkward, but it seemed to flow a little bit better. I, I probably have to give credit to those that I was chasing out uh, throughout this track. I'm really looking at, as we mentioned previously too, I'm really looking at P2 and P1 here. So I'm looking at P3, of course. So a lot of my attention is looking at P1, P2, what they're doing, just to understand like where they're going to go most likely for their lines. And you can see a little bit of proximity being generated just in case. And then we switch to another run here with Scooby and F mods. I guess it is, I guess it is FV mods, but same same but yeah again just kind of watching them you can see me a little bit a little bit of hesitation on my transitions I, i'm still not feeling super confident on this track there's just a couple small sections here and there and then i think here if i remember correctly i was really looking at our p1 here you can see how p2 a little bit of squirreliness a little bit of uh, adjustments but if you compare my card to p1 I was actually matching a lot of his line and his angle and that kind of helped again to stabilize the train a little bit scooby again is a, a fantastic driver i don't want him to come across the wrong way um you know just a little bit of adjustments that maybe he was making or whatnot but now we switch to one of our favorites and honestly it continues to grow on me i don't know when it's going to stop but we are on takamaki we have unlimited throwing down some crazy leads I think Friday night also, if anyone was curious, we were listening to, uh, I think we were listening to like 2000 Rock, dude. We were going to some dad divorce rocks. No offense uh, to anyone watching, but it was kind of fun, man. It's a lot of throwbacks back in there. But yeah, really trying to follow his lines, looking at his transitions, thinking about the lines that I'm creating for the people behind me. So I'm not trying to cut it in too hard. Trying to really keep up the the c5 if you ever drifted with it or someone in the c5 rather it is a very fast car and uh you know honestly i, I think turbo drives it the fastest but the c5 really exposes you for anytime you make a mistake you're late on transition that thing will just hook up and go on you so i'm really trying hard to maintain proximity as best as i can without taking like really shallow lines still trying to be followable for the people behind me pretty decent sized train as we ramp up the friday night i should say but yeah it looks actually pretty good man looks like a pretty good run oh, i'm sorry i think we have one more we now have a scooby the homie up in the lead now you can kind of see and compare his lead compared to unlimited's lead now this is like one of those things where the more you drive with drivers uh, which maybe sounds obvious, but maybe if you drive with like pretty well skilled drivers in general, you can really pick up. There's a lot of subtle differences, the way, or maybe nuances of ways they take the lines, the way that uh, they approach certain corners. And you can see like for me and Scooby, I have a little bit better synergy based off how he drives and, and I drive myself. But also this could be a little bit due arguably to the C5 having such grip and uh and speed compared to maybe this this S14. It's a little bit more of a smooth uh car in overall. But yeah, same thing that I was doing with Unl Unlimited, just trying to stay with them best as I can, trying to match that transition timing. I was really going to focus on it this video, but I honestly I was just vibing this weekend. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, dude. I I, I told myself from our last video and then going this weekend, I was like, 
yeah i'm gonna really work on that transition timing i'm really gonna focus on that but honestly i, I was just vibing having a good time with the boys didn't focus on it as hard as i could have but still such a great weekend honestly Friday, friday was uh super vibe but now we switch over to saturday and here you're gonna see me actually in a different car i really should have taken notes on this uh i don't want to miss say what car this is but i think it is full gaming's r31 if i'm wrong definitely correct me and i'm really sorry now this car sounds pretty unhinged in a good way dude it's it's a pretty it's a crazy sounding car what was really interesting to me if i recall properly is it felt really loose though felt really loose on the front end felt very similar to the v1 chaser and alteza which as i mentioned before like driving different cars is always such a good idea and especially with the pack like swarm they all drive so uniquely out of the box sure you can make a car probably feel like another car but if you really like try and trust what they're doing with these cars they feel very different and here we're in the, actually the big refrigerator aka the steggy aka the stiega and uh yeah different sound definitely a very very heavy feeling car i mean obviously i guess but dude this thing feels like an absolute unit dude i i don't know how to describe other than that but yeah it was fun to drive uh it felt very heavy I, i'm not really sure it, it also felt a little bit looser than i was expecting for this car to fill and i'm sure there's like a, a lot of technical reasons but uh yeah it definitely felt a lot different than the e46 i'm kind of coming to realize that the e46 feels like it's probably the most on rails car out there maybe you could debate that i'm sure but the, at least to me and then here not the prettiest of transitions but we switch over to the a70 supra uh shout out to yasko too by the way he was uh switching cars with me trying them all out with me as well we're just kind of messing around you can see there i'm not really super familiar with the gearing so it's a little bit scuffed but it, honestly not having a terrible tandem here another car again i felt like the front end was really washy if i recall correctly i know it's only been a few days but it's just hard to remember the exact feeling could be a really cool car i really like how it sounds it's a very unique sound definitely give it a roll if you haven't driven this i don't i don't really see i i don't really think we've had it in rotation for quite a while so about to give it a whirl myself and then i think the final car that we tried out here on shadow valley was the tbz s13 now i've said it before and i'll definitely say it again if you're starting out on the swarm pack if you're trying to get bearings for it this car the s13 tbz specifically is such a solid just generally all around good feeling car uh and especially if you're coming from like wts or gravy garage or w dwg any of those other car packs i feel like this is a really good entry or like an intro to swarm very stable has a very obvious correlation from what you came from to what it is so if you're looking to get in the car pack and you're just like not sure i'd probably start out with this but again i would recommend switching through rotating see which one vibes kind of with your driving style and uh, go from there but yeah i really like the the s13 now we go over to the c5 same track of course c5 man it, it is so weird to me now i've seen so many people drive it well you can see i'm struggling a little bit it just feels like it should be so much more beefy I, i'm not sure why i think it has probably just like a crazy torque beak or something but it feels like once you let off throttle it'll grip up really fast not really my taste i want to like the vet so bad dude i want to like it so bad but uh it just doesn't fit my style i'm not i'm not quite sure it just i guess the uh the torque curve or the power band just feels really awkward to me uh but i think again it's just like one of those driving styles i've seen so many people kill it in the c5 but i don't think it's i don't think it's a car i think it's definitely me but anyway that's all the cars i wanted to try on saturday so then we switched to bhs old tree drift track another one of our favorites another really good track just for kind of vibing some big trains big uh sweeping uh corners 
Sorry, I forgot what that word was, I guess. Here we're following a big fridge from our friend Dose. And uh, actually, we, we were talking a lot about the FPV changes while we were drifting on this track, if I recall correctly. I think Do uh, both Dose and Gosco actually changed their FPV and found it very beneficial. So guys, if you haven't messed with the FPV, check out the last video that I made, kind of talking about it. I have a ca calculator in there too. I think also like we were kind of discussing, there's going to be some li limitations uh, based on your setup, but dialing in at least a little bit better as best as you can, as best as your physical space allows you to really will make a big difference. Um, I, I think so. And watching it back, especially with those that made those changes, not only is it more engaging, but it does seem like it made a difference in their general general driving. But here we're on a different run following Dose yet again, the big refrigerator with a nice little sunset. I'm still struggling a little bit to understand where the rear end of this car is, so you'll probably notice I'm a little bit further back than maybe I should be or could could be, arguably. But just kind of staying with him, following his lines the best I can, trying to be chaseable for those behind me. Dose doing a pretty good job of running the lines that I'd argue are probably the right lines, but let's just say the lines that generally the lobby has been running. But yeah, just stick in with them, not doing anything too crazy. Just trying to be, again, really consistent with the proximity. Making sure, or trying rather, not to his rear end. Making a little bit of a mistake there. You can see the train having to absorb that mistake there too. But I did a good job of fixing that. And then uh, our next track, we actually switched to another BHS track. This is a BHS Drift Playground. I think one of the VDS uh, players was talking about maybe uh, testing out some grassroots action. So we said, hey, you know what might be cool? Maybe we can run BHS Drift Playground, give you that feel of the VDC, give you some zones to kind of aim for, but still have like a nice flowy track. Also was thinking, I think during this track, man, I think the spectator is like, I think that's actually what caused a lot of lag. This is this track is really fun, but there's like just after some time or in certain areas, there's a, a lot of lag. And you can see there to our left, all those spectators and also the entry area, a lot of spectators too, which feels like it caused lag. Also look at the the track map or the, the, the file itself. That's like over uh, 500 trees or something insane. I don't know if that affects performance. Honestly, maybe you guys can tell me. But here we're just kind of following Scooby. He's getting familiar. This is a, I think is his first time on this track. We're just kind of scoping it out, filling it out. And then we move to a chase with Scooby and R actually in P2, me in P3. So again, sandwiched between two fridges. It's a little bit nerve wracking. So I'm trying my best not to run into the rear end of this refrigerator as best as possible. Trying to stay consistent, really looking the best I can through our P2's windows, basically, to see what lines Scooby's taking. Train looking pretty healthy here. Big entry kind of fill right there on that corner. The better you throw it, I feel like the better you take that line, the less you have to left foot break, at least from my experience. Picking a pretty solid line there, too. Track cam looking pretty nice, man. A little bit of mistakes, as we can see. Going a little bit shallow here. Scooby takes a wider line, but you can see R going a little bit shallower. So I'm just kind of following his line, what line that P2 is given to me. I think if I were to try to follow P1 with that uh, a little bit more shallow P2 angle, it would have been harder for me. But now we switch over to Grange Motor Circuit. I think we ran this last weekend. Another pretty fun track. Been working really hard on this corner going on that inside zone outside you have a little bit of extra space this inside corner holding left foot brake a little bit trying to extend this drift as far as i can it always feels like i'm literally shallowing out but re-watching this track cam with you guys here it doesn't really look that bad and then this corner i still don't know i mean i'm really trying not to e-brake it but i i just i just don't ever feel like i can hit it and same for these two corners i i'm not really too sure I think I mentioned this in our last video, but it feels like a lot more IRL drivers go really wide on these corners, but I don't know if I've necessarily ever seen a train or a video of a train on this track IRL. 
But here's another run with Dose in the lead. I actually think he said he's going to go to an IRL event in Grange. So he was petitioning for the lobby to switch over, get some a uh, little bit of AC practice in for his uh, potential IRL session. But here, same thing, same idea as what I explained before. Trying to just keep that proximity best I can, follow his angle, making a couple kind of big corrections, honestly, and uh, you can see P3 drop out. Then, yeah, this part, I tried using the E brake. I, I just don't feel like it's it, man. Like, every time I've hit the E brake, I always get contact from people behind me reminding me, like, hey, bro, uh, that one's not really working for me. Uh, a little bit too much. So we'll see. This is definitely a track, like, it seems like it should be straightforward, but it, it rarely is. Now we move to DMAF Houston Police Academy. I believe a couple videos ago, this track was in there. Now, unfortunately, this track doesn't have track cams, which is probably for better or worse. The reason why I say better for worse is you can really see the way that the train's going to react to my lines and the way that they each driver is going to be reacting to each other and the proximity that it either generates or dissipates. Now, really quick, let's talk about the lines that I'm looking at here. So this is basically the start. I'm trying to stay within this two gray zones, a little bit of elevation change, entering a little bit at those cones. Basically, trying to go a little bit wide, looking at those green cones here. A little Manji transition here at that green cone. Filling this outside zone. Going so inside zone, outside, going for this outside, going inside, but trying to stay forward momentum, forward momentum there. Same on this corner right here, a little bit shallow, but forward momentum, forward momentum. This track, definitely, you really want to need that. Uh, you're going to want to do that. This area too, try not to go too far wide out. Trying to, again, a little bit more shallow, just to con uh, have that consistency in my forward momentum. So I think I left a couple runs in here more than like two as normal. But here, transition, going for the inside zone to the outside here, to the outside here, to the inside here. And you can see the driver in front of me slowing down because he's taking the outside zone. But I'm trying to take that inside zone, keep that, uh, uh, geez, I keep forgetting the word, but maintain speed. And you can see a little bit of static there that was created from, uh, again, the driver in front of us. No offense to him, man. I, I heard that it was his new first time on the server. Probably actually first time on this track. But that forward momentum you really want to carry, especially on a track like this. And you're going to see on that track camera at the very top, when you don't carry that forward momentum, the train kind of suffers. A little bit later uh, transitions here. But again, outside zone, looking for that inside to go forward, trying to hold a little bit. And then you can see that bunching up, right? I had to slow down a little bit, slow down the guy a little bit behind me the guy behind him a little bit more and then you have that whole accordion effect that's what we're trying to avoid here and then this section too if you don't take it right you can see again someone having to actually reset out very fun track very technical track definitely uh shout out to the revamp this is the revamp version if i didn't say that already but yeah i just wanted to show a little bit more of like a a chill like follow slash chase from me not really pushing it too hard just trying to see how they're running it there were so many drivers on this track. It was crazy, man. I think we have like, not that it's very obvious, but I think we had like 20, 22 drivers or whatever the max is, man. I think we were like two below that. Yeah, this was super crazy. We were running the Lone Star track layout specific. And uh, it was really cool. They have like this little pit area. It felt like it was very reminiscent of some IRL events. But here taking that corner a little bit more shallow, just to try to catch some of that proximity that I've been generating, unfortunately. Again, aiming on the inside, going to this outside here, aiming for the inside. You can see a little bit of static from the train, trying to recoup it best I can, just in case someone's behind me. Going on the inside corner here, to this outside, and if you hit it properly, you should be able to take that corner without losing too much momentum, even if you're e-braking. Pretty fun track if you haven't driven it. Shout out to the uh, revamp version, by the way. I don't have the creator name on hand, so my apologies, but we switched to now Mombara Twin Circuit. This is the 90s, I think. I think it's called... Pretty sure that's who made that. Uh, this track, excuse me. There is another track that exists out there that wasn't created by the 90s crew. I, and again, my apologies if that's not the correct name. But the reason why I chose this one and the reason why I wanted to run it rather was just because, the honestly, the pit box is a little bit higher. It does sound like the other version, though, doesn't have as crazy of these... Uh, rumble strips that will just 
annihilate you. A super, super fun track. I'm still struggling a little bit with the proximity. I was told on the chicane rumble strips, that's where I'm losing a lot of it. A lot of people are cutting it, I guess, a lot more aggressively than I am. But I was trying to find the right flow that could make sense without cutting it too hard. Not sure I would say I'm very proficient at this track, so I can't really give a lot of feedback there. But here we have a little bit more of a, a tandem slash a little bit of a train behind us. I'm trying my absolute hardest to just stay behind uh, and stay close as possible here. The professor going, this line is actually looking pretty nice. That line I like a lot. It's the line that I'm typically looking for. You can see he carried that momentum through the chicane, but still avoided going sicko mode on those uh, rumble strips. I don't know why I'm saying sicko mode. I feel like I already said it twice for no reason. But yeah, just trying to fill it out. I want to really work on hitting that corner without having to e-brake, but just trying to stay as close to him as I can as we go throughout this Mumbara Twin Circuit. But now we find ourselves back on Ebisu Nishi, and this is specifically the Matsuri layout for anyone curious. This one is such a fun track. It is so short, as I mentioned. I actually wanted to throw a lot of them back to back to back. You'll see the absolute unit of these trains building. Now keep in mind the track camera in some sections is kind of weird. And also with cars that are really far back, you're not gonna see their car model load just because of the performance settings that I have uh, on my computer, just to be able to manage with these crazy lobbies. But this track was still just as fun as I remember it. We had such an insane amount of people on this track. It was really fun to just kind of go there was a couple trains here and there. People were starting to fill it out. Sometimes trains would die, but it was fun to just kind of go back and forth between the different trains, see how everyone's style was, uh, how they were taking the track basically and what their lines look like. And here, here, like what you'll see is like, some of them will go outside, some will go inside. This corner, typically about the same. This area I noticed some people go really wide here. Some people go really shallow. Some people will run that whole outside zone. Some people think that more shallow line like I did. Honestly, I'm just trying my best to keep up, man. No, it's not the prettiest, but I'm like desperately trying to make sure that I'm not messing up anyone behind me. But here we move to another run. We got turbo in front of us. Starting out a little bit far ahead. I think, uh, if I'm being honest, I think I was in the mid pack of a train and then I got promoted to the front and I started uh, more or less crying that I didn't want to be a lead. So Turbo came and picked it up then. I'm just being honest with you guys. I did not want to lead. I'm still not feeling super confident with this track. Also, it's kind of low key, a little bit more fun in my opinion to chase. I really like chasing. I don't know why. But I think this is the final lap from this track. Maybe a little bit long, but I mean, it's just so fun to like watch honestly it's so fun to watch it feels really good too on this track when you hit it properly man shout out to everyone that was running this track it was crazy dude it's crazy a small track but definitely a goodie speaking of small tracks that are fun let's talk about this track this is a track actually from our friends from otm i know i'm gonna butcher this so please don't hate me uh apparently i think it's pronounced corona mountain but it's like k-u-h H-R-O-N-A uh, for those that don't know how to spell because I definitely could never. Let's talk about this track because it's actually insane, bro. So basically, I have three runs uh, of leads and then chase. I want to talk about it because this track will feel so claustrophobic, bro. Like, I promise you the, the second I started drifting on this track, I was like, oh my gosh. I don't know why anyone recommended it. I don't know, man. This track is feeling kind of crazy. But genuinely, once you start filling out the lines and hitting them properly, the track really opens up to you and feels a lot better. But also I will add in addition, it's really, really sweaty because it's such a small track. You mess up, you're gonna mess up people behind you. There's nowhere to really bail out. Like it's kind of a do or die track, man. It makes sense why OTM might run it or even rather created it. But here, let's talk about the lines going a little bit outside, going for this inside zone or inside line, going outside, extending that out. And then here, going a little bit inside to prop us out for the outside zone. A little bit of a manji action here. Throwing it in, not e-braking this time, trying to run that full outside. And then this is like actually a hair pair, hair pin corner. It looks very simple. Maybe it is, but for me, dude, I was struggling with that for sure, dude. 
and then we switch to not only this track being very difficult but now we switch to full night mode so as you guys know we have night and day cycles on our server at the moment could always change depending on how the community feels but yeah this is full night uh transitioning towards the day so the lights are off because it's saying hey man the, the lights coming soon we don't need to be on this is just insanity bro i mean if you just watch that track camera i mean you can see definitely my first person view but you can just see the absolute carnage i mean i was literally sweating so hard at bro like it is really hard to try to have like good proximity maintain a good line not ruin people's uh drift behind you i think maybe on a solo or like a tandem this track could be pretty chill challenging but uh definitely like chill just kind of like a little bit harder definitely definitely maybe not a warm-up track but one of those like uh post warm-up tracks maybe but yeah it sounded like everyone was really enjoying it I, it definitely was uh a track that helped challenge me a little bit more think about how my lines affect others think about how to maximize a track very reminiscent of a lot of those japanese tracks from well literally from japan that are out there that people like to drive but if you haven't driven this track i definitely recommend it i don't really have a lot of feedback for the lines or for the way i was driving because dude i was just all over the place man but we were vibing it was a good time the lines not may not be great but the vibes were fantastic okay sometimes that's all that matters bro uh, and this was one of those times but for our final track of the weekend we switched from corona mountain to ld2f english town now this isn't the xvc english town that you guys might uh know about or think of when you hear that this is the ld2f version uh not version but rather completely different track and uh shout out to d unit or do you not i'm pretty sure i said it right the first time my man hooked us up some beautiful track cameras before they were very wide very wide crazy looking fov here uh was really fun to watch i mean if you watch this entry on that track cam looks crazy bro i mean shout out to the homie dude as always uh all the dudes from swarms all really good dudes but yeah i just wanted to give like a little bit of a lead a little bit of context of what we were getting into i feel like i was getting a little bit more proficient on that entry now there were times where i was trying a couple different entry points but following a lot of these different uh, a lot of the different drivers on the server kind of helped me rethink some of these lines too and actually if you can see there I feel a little bit more confident on that uh outside zone against the wall definitely but yeah going outside here trying to extend that out going outside on that little extra patch that you see that's uh out there not obvious at first it's definitely out there trying to keep the forward momentum best i can this section i was trying to like fill it out a little bit it seemed like if i go to for this outside try to pull it in you can see me struggling just a little bit a little bit of correction over the hill not too bad there still trying to figure out that corner to set me up properly for that uphill downhill but here you can see it's a party man we're on a racetrack <laughs> like dude it literally felt like a racetrack i was even saying on street man holy we're on an actual racetrack uh, going down the straight but yeah look at that you can see me make a massive mistake the train behind me being intelligent enough uh to try to try to fix my massive mistake i just missed time the entry wasn't sure what's happening was trying to be a little bit probably too conscious of what's going on around me but we actually have two more runs i wanted to add a little bit of extra just for those of you that uh, enjoy this series and really maybe enjoy this track too man i definitely like the realism that this track fills it is made i believe off a of real track too so it makes sense but now we have a chase a little bit less people but we have a chase with our friend reg throwing it in i'm looking for that inside trying to really mainly here stay with his lines and stay with his uh or rather our proximity not trying to let it generate too much not trying to fall back too far and here he takes a lot better of a line you'll see he took a little bit of an inside corner to then a gradual outside corner which set him up pretty well including myself to this downhill section i think that's probably the best line you could take or some variant of that but pretty close and then here it's a road race baby trying to stay close otm he uh reg had actually a really cool entry i like the way he enters 
I was working really, really hard to try to be on his door, uh, really anyone's door on that entry because that camera really showing who's uh, killing it and who's not. And you could see me going a little bit too aggressively and actually into his door. It's pretty scary. I definitely say this track is super scary at night, by the way. I think I think the unit gave me some uh, track cams. I don't think I set them up properly. My bad. But yeah, at night, uh, it is very dark. Very, very dark. But yeah, man, if you can believe it, dude, I, every time I swear to you guys, I record this, I feel like I'm just like enjoying it. I'm vibing and it always feels so abrupt. Like we're already on our last run of the, the evening of the session this weekend. But while we're here, guys, like honestly, I know I say this all the time, but I do genuinely mean it. Thank you so much. All of you guys are coming from YouTube, coming in the streams, saying what's up, vibing with the homies. And also, like, actually driving on the server, like, thank you guys. It's been a pleasure to have you guys. Um, and also, everyone that's been giving me feedback on the series, whether that's on the DMs or just on stream, it seems like this series is actually making a difference. Sometimes you look at the views and you're like, oh, man, I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job. But hearing that feedback, hearing that I'm making a difference and, and helping other drivers out there, that's all that I really care about, and that means the world to me. So... Thank you guys so much for watching yet another series. It's crazy you were on our uh, series 11. Hope you guys had a great or have a great week. Hope you guys had a great weekend. And I genuinely look forward to seeing hopefully a lot of you guys on track this weekend. We'll make it another fun sesh. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.